Hey YouTube, how's it going? It's Quinton here and welcome to tutorial number 11. And in this tutorial, we are finally getting started with the code. So I know a lot of you guys have probably been wondering and waiting for this moment, but uh, yeah, we're finally there. So I'm taking a look at uh, Asana real quick just to see what our next couple of tasks are to do or what we're supposed to be doing in the next couple of tasks. And uh, yeah, as you guys can see, we have ticked off the design tasks. So I've done the homepage design, the about page design and all of these. I haven't quite done the contact us page design just yet, but I will take care of that uh, off camera and then we will look at that in the next couple of videos. Uh, but for now, let's take a look at setting up our website template. And then the next thing we're gonna have to do is set up our website header. But the website template is pretty much everything that we're gonna be doing in this video. So uh, the first thing you need to do is get MAMP downloaded and installed if you don't already have it installed. Uh, but I've got MAMP on my computer. If you guys don't have MAMP on your computer, click up here in the top corner of the screen and uh, you can watch a video on how to download and install MAMP. Now let's go ahead and hit open the web start page and then I'm going to click on my website. If this link isn't here, you can also just copy and paste the link from up here. Uh, just leave everything from backslash MAMP out. So don't, don't use any of that stuff. Just use the local host and whatever's there right, uh, whatever number you have up here. And that is going to uh, take you to this page that right now says index of, and the reason why it says index of is because if I go back over to uh, my finder, or if you guys are using Windows, uh, Windows Explorer, uh, you're gonna see that uh, your HTD, htdocs folder is blank. If it isn't blank, you need to delete whatever's in there. And uh, we're going to be filling up this space with whatever is uh, going to be on our website. So now what I'd like to do is open up Sublime Text and I'm going to hit File, Save As, and let's save this in our htdocs directory. And I'm going to save this as index.php. Uh, please make sure you're using PHP. Uh, if you're using .html, stuff is not going to work later on. So please make sure that this is index.php and hit save. Um, and uh, yeah, we now have our PHP file kind of set up. So I'm gonna open up my HTML uh, tag and hit enter and that's gonna auto complete a whole bunch of stuff for me. And uh, for the title right now, I think I'm just going to set this as build a website. Right, but there's a few things that we're gonna have to do, right? From here, we're going to need to link to uh, UIKit CSS. Uh, then we're also going to need to link to our custom CSS. CSS, right? And then we're also going to link to JavaScript, uh, jQuery's JavaScript. So uh, I think I'm gonna link to those in the footer and not in the header. Uh, some people like to put their JavaScript files in the header, and in fact, it's fairly standard practice for a lot of people to do that. But um, yeah, if you guys have ever worked with uh, a website called Google PageSpeed, so let me just go ahead and uh, Google this for you right now. But Google has this PageSpeed tools thing, uh, and basically, if you ever test your website with this tool, uh, it's going to tell you to get rid of render blocking JavaScript. So if you have a lot of JavaScript files up here in the head, uh, basically it just takes, it makes the website take longer to load. Um, and if you put them down here in the footer, that kind of fixes the problem. So uh, we're going to be linking to our JavaScript in the bottom of our website. Uh, and the first thing we're gonna have to do is link to uh, jQuery's JavaScript file. And the next thing we're gonna have to do is link to UIKit's uh, JS, right? So we're gonna have to link to UIKit's JavaScript. Um, and uh, we might also need to link to a UIKit theme at some point, but for now we need to take care of all of these. Uh, something else we're gonna have to do is also uh, link to a Google font, right? So uh, these are all the things that I wanna take care of in this video. The first thing to do is to get UIKit's CSS. So what you wanna do is go over to UIKit's website, uh, go to the Get Started page and download UIKit, or you can follow the instructions that they have set up on this page. Um, but for now, 
Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and click download. Well, actually, I'm not gonna click download because I already have this downloaded. So if I go over to my downloads, um, you guys are gonna have downloaded this as a zip file. Uh, and then when you unzip that file, it's going to look kind of like this. So what I'd like to do is copy all of those uh, or copy that entire folder. And then let's go over to htdocs again, paste that in here. And now I've got my UIKit folder set up. So let's just uh, remove or rename this. And I'd like to rename it to UIKit. And that's just going to be a little bit simpler for creating our link, right? So let's go over to our index file. And to link to UIKit CSS, let's open up a link tag. Uh, relationship is equal to style sheets. By the way, if this is not here, your link is not going to work. And uh, then we need to um, set this equal to our uh, folder or our files directory. Uh, so I'm gonna start off by adding in a forward slash. And that's just going to mean wherever I am right now, let's just link to uh, the root directory or go back to the root directory, which in this case is our htdocs folder. And then from there, we can go into our UIKit folder. So let's go into UIKit. And then the next thing we're gonna have to do is go into CSS. And then we're gonna have to link to one of these CSS files. Now, if you guys don't know the difference between uh, minified CSS and CSS, let me just show you guys those real quick. Um, so, uh, yeah, basically uh, normal CSS is all spaced out. There can be a lot of comments and stuff. Uh, it's very easy to read, but the problem is that this can slow down your loading time and that's really, really annoying for the user. So uh, what we like to do is minify CSS files and that removes all of the spaces from CSS. Uh, it makes it very difficult to read, but it does mean that the website loads a little bit quicker. Uh, so I'm gonna be using uh, UIKit min.css in my link. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, type in CSS, UIKit.min.css, and that is going to link to my UIKit CSS, right? I can also um, link to jQuery now. So let's move over to the jQuery link. And what we need to do to uh, get that link is um, type jQuery CDN Google into Google. And that's gonna take us to uh, this link over here. I will leave that link in the video description below. Uh, let's find jQuery in the side menu here. And I'm gonna link to the latest version of jQuery, which is version three. Um, if for some reason version three doesn't work, you might wanna just go back a version. So try that later on. Uh, but uh, basically uh, UIKit 1 is kind of for Internet Explorer. There are certain versions of Internet Explorer that don't quite work uh, with the latest versions of jQuery. And there are also other browsers that might not work with the latest, latest version of jQuery uh, version 3. But I think for the most part across the new browsers, we are sorted and jQuery 3 will work across all of those. So let's uh, paste that script tag in here. Uh, and that looks good. Uh, now what we need to do is also link to UIKit's CSS. So I'm gonna open up a script tag and then I'm going to give this a source, src equal to, and our source for our UIKit JS is gonna be very, very similar to this uh, href up here for our style sheet. So we're gonna go into, or we're gonna go to our root directory with that slash and then we're gonna go into UIKit, um, JS, and then into UIKit.min.js. Uh, so it's probably good to show you guys where that file is. So it's in the JS directory and it is this file here. So we're linking to UIKit.min.js, which is there. Now, very, 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 very important. Uh, if you don't have jQuery linked above the UIKit JS file, then it's not going to work, right? So uh, you have to make sure that jQuery is linked before you link to UIKit's JS file. Just saying, uh, right? Now we need to link to Google's font. And I think I want to use uh, the Roboto font for my design because that's what I was using. Well, that's what I was using in my designs. So that's what we need to load for uh, this website. So 
um, what you need to do is type in Roboto font, um, Google, <laughs> and uh, yeah, you can go over to Google's font directory. And you need to just select the font. So uh, let's click select font. And this little thing pops up where we can now get our link. So basically we need to copy all of that and paste that over here. So now we have our Roboto font linked. And the last thing I wanna do is link to my custom CSS file, which I haven't yet created, uh, but we can create that now. So let's go over to, well, yeah, make sure you've got Sublime open. And let's say file, new file, file, save as. And uh, we wanna save this in a folder called CSS. Uh, so we've got our index.php file there. We've got our UIKit file there. Let's create another file or folder over here called uh, CSS. And let's call our file custom.css. <clears throat> Sorry for the squeaker. <laughs> uh, but let's call this custom.css and hit save. And that is our custom CSS file. So I can leave a comment here. Uh, custom CSS goes here. And actually one of the first things I wanna do in this custom CSS file is select my body. And we're going to take this style rule, font family, and set that to Roboto. So let's jump back over here and paste that in, save, and that should make all of the text on my website Roboto, all right? So now we can go back over to localhost, and uh, that's of course our website, hit enter, and uh, it looks like everything's kind of worked so far. Uh, I think what we can do to test here is in our body, uh, open up a link tag, and then just set the href to hash, uh, but give this a class of uk-button, and then just give it some text of demo. Save this, and uh, let's refresh. And now, if everything has worked correctly, you should have a gray button, which is styled in the UI kit styling. Uh, and you should have Roboto font, um, and uh, you shouldn't have any errors. So let's inspect element here. And uh, yeah, you can see that the uh, text right now looks like it's set to... Now UIKit has been set up correctly and that's working, but I have seen that my font is not quite correct. So uh, taking a look at my header document, I haven't actually linked to my main CSS file just yet. So what I'm gonna do is copy this link here, paste that in, uh, and then the directory path to that is just a little bit different. So instead of going into our UIKit directory, we're going into CSS. Uh, so let's just change that to be going into the CSS directory directly. And then we need to go into custom.css and that should now change my font family. So, okay, that looks good. Um, I think something that I haven't quite done here with uh, robot, my Roboto font is use the correct uh, sizing or a correct uh, boldness here. So I, I want the uh, thin and light fonts. So in order to get those, uh, we need to come back here, customize this, and let's make sure we have thin and light. Uh, and now uh, our link should probably have changed. So if we copy that, we can come back over to our Roboto font link here and just paste over that. And now we have the font weight of 100, 300 and 400. So I want all of those. And now we can come back over to my browser. Uh, and uh, that's probably not gonna change anything until we start styling it later on. Uh, but everything here should be working. And one last thing you might wanna do is inspect element and just make sure that your console doesn't have any errors. I know right now you might have like slow network detected and that's because I'm linking to my Google fonts files or font um, directory uh, and there's a little bit of a slow connection to that. Uh, but if I refresh, 
Hopefully that slow network error is the only error you have and you don't have any JavaScript files or JavaScript errors or anything like that. And we'll pick all of this up in the next video. But for now, I just wanna say thank you to all of my $5 patrons. So if you guys are not a patron just yet and you wanna get your name at the end of my videos, then please, become a patron and also uh, all patrons are gonna be able to download the code from my Patreon page. So if you guys wanna be able to download this code and continue working with me in the next couple of tutorials, uh, become a patron. And uh, don't forget to subscribe. Please feel free to leave a like, comment and share this video because all of that stuff is gonna help my channel grow and I'll see you guys next time.